make sure you get your tooling set up. Name them for which one you want. So you're gonna start off with the facing tool first. Yeah. Place it on there. Yeah. All right, so before the, the uh, quick change tool post, mm -hmm. so that it's perpendicular to the uh, axis of the machine. Okay. Uh, the tool, tool bit holders have been loaded into the tool holders themselves. And we're going to take a skim cut across the face of this until it's nice and clean. And then while this tool is in this position, we're going to go to um, C face measure while T10 is highlighted in the uh, offset page. A thousand and... Thousand, a thousand RPM and in input line. Yeah, so when you type anything here, it goes to the input line. I typed a thousand and I hit spindle forward. Yep. Now we're gonna do hand jog on the C negative. And I'm gonna bring the tool in close. I'm slightly inside the part so that as I roll over, I'll know when it touches the tool. I'm gonna go to 1,000 increments and just scratch the edge, all right. So as soon as the tool touched it, I went to position and then I arrowed over into the operators tab. Z is highlighted, so that's what's the active, uh, active axis. I'm gonna hit origin to clear it out. X axis, I'll bring the tool off the edge of the part. And I'm gonna go negative uh, 25,000 on the Z. Maybe 25, I'm gonna go back to the X axis. And now I'm gonna feed in and just make a cut across the surface. Once this face is completely cleaned off, I will move back in the x-axis only so as to not move the tip of the cutter off of the face of the part. If your tool is set to the proper height up and down, you'll have no nipple in the center. It's in the center, it's completely smooth, so our uh, tool height is properly set. Placing the turning tool in now. Yep. And again, to adjust up and down, um, this is your, your thumb stud to adjust it up and down. And then you need to make sure you use the locking nut to make sure that this doesn't move after you've set it. Tool's locked in, you shut the doors. Now with this tool, I'm gonna bring it close to the surface, just in over top of the edge, so that when it touches the surface, I'll know. I'll go back to the position tab under operator. And then we'll go in another uh, five thou. All right. Stop. X axis. Press position. Yep. X axis. Position. X axis will highlight your X. And I'm going to clear that out. And I'm going to go in negative five thousandths. And that might be enough. Let's go ten thou. Might be enough to clean up that edge. Spindle forward, go back in the Z, and we're gonna feed across that face just to get a nice clean surface. And it looks like it did not clean the surface up, so we'll have to take another uh, deeper cut. x-axis I'm gonna go in to 15 thou and back in Z beat across that surface to see if it all cleans up this time nope still blinking I'm gonna go in another 10 another five 
Our part is almost the same diameter as this, so that's why I'm not taking a deep cut right here. All right, and then for this one, it looked, the edge looks clean, so I moved in the Z-axis only, so as, and that's cleaned up all the way around. All right. T11, arrow down to 11, and this is the X uh, measurement. So we're gonna hit X diameter measure, and it's gonna ask us for a diameter. So I'm gonna grab for a caliper to measure it. All right, so we're at one inch, 983 thousandths. One inch, point nine, eight three and we were a smidge over and you hit enter and it will populate the uh, correct offset for the x value all right hand jog x remove the tool away from the part just a little bit and we're going to try to just by eyeball center that radius on the z face That looks pretty close. For the part that we're making, it's, it's going to be plenty close enough. All right, we're going to go to, we're going to stay on T11, and we're going to go to the Z face measure, the Z dimension. So T11, Z face, we're going to do Z face measure, and that updated. So that tool is set now. So we have a, since we have a clean face on the diameter of it now, I'm going to go back to T10. And I'm going to bring that cutter in until it kisses the surface. Look, my bad. You do it manually, okay? Yep. Get it close. And I'm just going to look for the lightest scratch possible. And I'm in the ten thousandths. There. All right, so we just scratched the surface. Now I know that the edge of that tool is on the diameter. So we're gonna go to T10 in the offsets on the X diameter, and I'm gonna hit X measure, and that was one decimal nine, three, eight, five, and enter. So now both of our tools are set on the X and the Z. Now we got one more tool we gotta do. Let me bring the tool away from the edge. We'll put our parting tool in, and then we'll touch off. This is gonna be T12, our parting tool. I'll come down to T12. We just touched off on the Z face, so I'm gonna make sure I'm in the Z column, and then Z face measure. And we'll do the same for the X value. So, you know, you know who's who is our receiving sign? Bariga. Yeah, it's yours, but we're fixing it because it broke. The laptop? Yeah, I, I broke it on accident. Oh, gosh, I can't. I'm not doing my thing. All right, we're gonna touch the parting tool off on the X diameter side of the part. So same process. I'm just gonna rotate it as I bring the tool in and look for it to scratch the surface. All right, just formed a very thin chip. So on the T12, the X. Diameter and then 1.9835. Now we have all of our tools set. And that's how you set your tool for the lathe. We're going to use constant uh, surface speed. So we check it 600 feet per minute. And then the max RPM of that machine is 2000 RPM. And then the feed rates. Our 10th out per T, you'll get these from the 
insert manufacturer. And all it's just going to go down and face that. See, see how I had it here? I would edit that. So when you're drilling, right, you wanna, if you wanna know how far you're going in, right, without guesstimating, you gotta look at this, it's called a quill, and it has measurements on there. Now, you have to unlock it and make sure you lock the tailstock in place. All right.